It is only with practice that we change the mind patterns. The practice of acceptance, the practice of letting go, teaches you to have a cool, calm life, a life that will support enlightenment. Welcome to Satsang. How long does it take to become enlightened? Ah, that's a funny question. I really think it takes lifetimes. This idea that you do everything right and you become enlightened, I think that's a myth. I think it depends on what you've done here before. I think the people who wake up have been here many, many times. But in this lifetime, to wake up, you need a mind that will support enlightenment. And the only type of mind that will support enlightenment is a mind that can surrender unconditionally. And that's an uncommon thing in a human being because unconditional surrender is against survival. It's achieved through the practice of acceptance and the practice of let go. But most people do not practice acceptance and they do not practice let go. They practice hanging on and they practice resistance to life. And so most people create a life of suffering for themselves until they die as a result of the practices they do. Someone who's awake has mastered their mind to quite a large degree, at least to the degree where they can be in unconditional surrender. And a mind that is like that is equanimous. It is flatlined. But I don't think that's enough. I think there's more to it. Because enlightenment itself is an accident, or at least it seems that way. And I think that accident is facilitated by what people have done before. In the West, past lives are just a new age thing, some kind of hippie thing. But I started remembering my past lives when I was a Roman Catholic schoolboy at the age of 10. And I've remembered hundreds of them since. The idea that there's not past lives, to me, is ridiculous. Anybody that appears in satsang, anybody that appears as a seeker, has definitely done this before. Because you've been called to do it again. Until you get free. And enlightenment is freedom. Freedom from the prison of the mind. And that's up to you. You create your reality with the way you think. And if you've got a mind that is just programmed to resist and defend itself, well, that's all you'll do unless you change it. It is only with practice that we change the mind patterns. The practice of acceptance, the practice of letting go, teaches you to have a cool, calm life, a life that will support enlightenment, a life that will support heart, a, well, a life that will support a relaxed way of being. But that's up to you. Nobody can do it for you. You can't get it by reading it in a book or listening to me. You only can get it through practice. What you practice is going to become your default pattern. And just so you know, default patterns take a few years to produce. Anyone can change what they're doing temporarily through discipline, 
but a default pattern happens automatically without you doing anything. And to develop a default pattern takes a few years. Is trying to calculate how long it's going to take to become in line in the way of awakening? Trying to calculate, trying to stop calculating is in the way because they're both movements of the mind into dream. And dream is in the way. When you were two years old, you were present without dream. You were just present, you just saw everything as it was. You weren't naming things yet, you weren't analyzing things yet, you weren't problem solving yet, not really. You were just present to reality. Becoming present to what is real is essential. Some people call it meditation. It is simply being aware of what is real and nothing you think is real. You spoke about past lives. Why do you think it takes so many lifetimes for awakening to occur in a human being? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One of the things I discovered is I don't know an awful lot. We are programmed to try to know so we can actually control things, so we can manipulate things. As you become more conscious, you give that up. You'd be okay with, I don't know. You stop manipulating, you stop controlling, you let go. Are there any signs that someone is close to enlightenment? I look for them in people who come. I look to see what they're experiencing, whether they're just caught in their minds or they're experiencing something of the spaces themselves. But still, I really don't know. I haven't got a clue. Are there any questions, any statements, or any challenges to anything that has been said here uh, this evening? Or does anyone have anything they'd like to chat about? Hello, Frida. Hello, Vishrant. Hello. So my question is, how do I find the, the best method to clear my mind? I've been trying different things, for example, like cleansing with water, or praying or meditating, but I'm not feeling like it's the best method at all times. For example, if I'm out on the street and I get really frustrated or angry and I don't have like access to certain things and I get really overwhelmed with that emotion. I'm still trying to find a way of how to clear my mind in those situations. Well, clearing your mind isn't going to be much good to you if you keep producing the same amount of density through your anger and your frustration. You see, that's like being in a boat that has a hole in the bottom and you're bailing it out while it's still filling up. You've got to work out how to stop creating the density that's inside of you. As long as you're getting angry and frustrated, you're turning yourself into some kind of victim to whatever. And that kind of thinking just creates density and takes you into lower consciousness. But that's your doing. And so you're looking for some magic wand that clears you, but you're the one that's producing the problem. Uh, you, you have to stop producing the problem. Any time that we turn ourselves into a victim of anything, we go into lower consciousness. And so if you're experiencing frustration and anger, you're definitely supporting victim-orientated thinking in yourself.
On another note, though, I used to jump in the ocean. I used to jump in the river. I used to jump under a cold shower. Anything that shocked me back into reality, anything that brought me back into my body and away from my mind, anything else, Frida. That's it. Thank you, Vishrant. Okay. Keep that analogy of the, the boat with a hole in the bottom, how you're bailing it out. You're trying to clear it, but there's still a hole in the bottom. Stop the hole. Stop being a victim. Stop producing anger. Stop producing anything that creates density in you. Frustration is just another word for anger anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, Rajesh. Hi, Vishan. Hello. Is a um, is certain amount of clarity required for meditation? No, just get present. When I was a teenager, I rode motorcycles in a club. And I found that at around about 160 kilometers an hour, which is 100 miles an hour, I started to get really present. And so clarity wasn't required to get present. What was required was the fear of death. <laughs> um. I'm asking because sometimes my mind is full of thoughts and um, yeah, I thought it's connected to how much clarity I have to how much, um, how quickly I'm able to, you know, become present. Uh, no. No, if you do uh, Bhagavan Sri Rajneesh's dynamic meditation or Kundalini meditation, you'll get present if you put your totality into it. If you don't put your totality into it, you probably won't, but that's up to you. If you want to find out what those meditations are like, just go online. They're there for free. I did, um, and I saw it's a lot of shaking involved. Yeah, a lot of shaking going on here. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Good to see you, Rajesh. Stefano, hello. Hello, Vishwan. Good to see hello. you again. Hello, Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had a question in mind, but um, now that, now I, I had another one. And uh, so, do you do you recommend? Not do you recommend, but is it, is it those meditations that Osho, you know, created, the dynamic meditations? I always had the, 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 the feeling that I wasn't allowed to do it on my own, or maybe if I do it on my own, I do it wrong. Is that okay if I do it on my own? It just Well, I did it on my own for years, but I also did it when I was doing uh, mystery school at Osho's centers. Um, I did it with groups, but when I wasn't at the center, I did it at home in my bedroom by myself and sometimes if there was people in the house and I didn't want to disturb them I'd do it with headphones on so it wouldn't disturb anyone else they couldn't hear the music but they may have heard the thumping as I was jumping up and down <laughs> you know yeah yeah because because I love I love doing it with groups I did it with groups the first time but then I don't have uh, the opportunity I thought Maybe on my own it would be good, and uh, yeah, so th thank you for, the, for this. If you put your totality, <clears throat> you put your totality into it, that's all. You do it totally, you don't do it half-hearted, half you put your totality into it and make it happen, and it will work for you. He was very clever, the old Bhagwan, he worked out that most people are full of pain, and so he created meditation techniques that are designed to release that pain. Uh, kundalini meditation and dynamic meditation. Up to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have nice. another question which, which I've had.
for, for a few weeks. And if I, when, when I, when I ask for Sanyas, what will happen with my old name? I, I mean, like, do I, do I legally change it? Or is it just something on the surface? Like, okay, so, I, so I, I, know, maybe. I, I can only talk about what I did. Uh, I took the, I got given the name Prem Vishrant, Swami Prem Vishrant, and I insisted that people call me Vishrant from then on. Uh, some of my closer friends call me Vish. Uh, my mother still won't call me Vish or Vishrant. She still calls me by my old name, which is 40 years ago. But, you know, because she's mother, she gets away with that. Um, but I didn't change my name by Deepol because I was doing a lot of traveling uh, around the world and I didn't want an unusual name in my password port because I didn't want to get checked out every single time at customs. And so I kept my legal name in my passport. And I kept my legal name on my driver's license for the same reason. But everybody else had to call me Vish or Vishran. <laughs> Because it was my master, my master gave me the name. And my name means restful or relax. And when I was given that name, I was not restful or relax. It was something I had to learn to do. Anything else, Stefano? No, that, that's it. Thank you very much, Vishen. Thank you. Nice to see you, Stefano. Me too. Nice to see you too. Macbeth, lovely. Hello, Hello Macbeth, lovely. <laughs> I know that you say that knowledge is the booby price, but I was wondering if there's any merit in still reading books on higher consciousness. Yep. I went to the Murdoch University Library where they have a large collection of spiritual books from lots of different masters. Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, you name it, Sufi. And I spent six months in there reading the masters because I wanted to collect spiritual knowledge. Now, the bottom line is, with every single one of them, unconditional surrender. That's all you need to learn, nothing else. Unconditional surrender. You just let go, let go, let go and accept life exactly how it is. No matter how good or how bad it is, you simply accept it. This teaches you unconditional surrender. Would it be a better use of my time then to go out more often and practice surrender rather than Absolutely. reading? Absolutely. All you have to do is be in relationship with someone, whether it's your father, your mother, or... Uh, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, all you need to do is be in relationship with someone because they're going to get you. It's the people that are close to us who we care about that can get us the best. And then we can really learn let go. Then we can really learn acceptance. They're our best teachers. And so people quite often avoid people who annoy them. But the people who annoy you are teaching you something about you somewhere inside of you that you haven't shown up with acceptance and surrender. This game is not about avoidance. It's about surrender. Anything else? Okay. No, thank you. Nice to see you, uh, Macbeth lovely. You too, my friend. <laughs> Nesta, 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 have I got something for you. Do you? Do you? Wow. <laughs> I didn't give you a long enough look for you to get it, okay? Deliberately. You've asked okay. for Sanyas. Do you still want Sanyas, Nesta? No, I don't want. Oh, that's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Oh, I changed my mind. No, just joking, man. Of course, I wouldn't say yes. She's on, not. Give her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mister. So I'll ask you again. 
Do you still want Senyas? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I've chosen you a name. Your Senyasin name is Prem Anav. Anav. Prem meaning love and Anav meaning ocean. It is in perceiving love that we find we have always been the ocean, not just the wave on the surface. Everything for love always. Openness counts for everything. Your way is the way of the heart because you're already very good with the mind. But what will soften you and what will bring you home is your heart. But to do that, you've got to become open and undefended. And that is going to be quite a task. But that is the way that would suit you and would serve you best. Arnev. I give you our new brother, Prem Arnev. Welcome, Prem Arnev. And Tosh will send you a copy of the Thank certificate. You Thank you very welcome. much. Such a privilege. Thank you. Is Anef A N E F or F? A R A R N A V. A R N A V. Anef. Anef. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Ocean, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Ocean, B. I'm. Um, yeah, Aquaman. Thank you, man. <laughs> Aquaman. Yeah, I can see Aquaman. that. Aquaman. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, myself. My love. Thank you. That's the way, love. That is the way. Wow. My name is Ocean. So beautiful. Thank you. Is there anything you else you'd much. like to talk about, Arnef? No. Okay. It's enough. So you're about two minutes old now. You're the youngest and yes and you're the youngest and yes and I have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 I'm <bored again. laughs> you know, I know you're a funny man. You really are. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> it's all a joke. So what else to be, man? So happy, my friend. Uh -huh. to say. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. May the force be with you. And with you. <laughs> Hang on, let's go one step further. Live long and prosper, Anav. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Not right now, me. I'm just going to enjoy all this water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, you, wow. you, are, you are the water. You are the ocean. You've been living as a wave for long enough. It's time to find yourself as the ocean. Mm. I think I'm going to make some, a song. I'm going to compose. A song for this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Susha, hello. <laughs> Love you so much. Love you too, Anna. Hello. 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 That was so beautiful. <laughs> You're getting so nice. Um. Giving sannyas felt like I was getting sannyas. Mm. Um, sometimes my mind feels the sense of urgency, and like 
it's not doing enough or it's not doing enough on the path of spirituality is that in the way there is only now and this is as good as it gets right here right now this is the only reality there is later is not real and before is not real it is only now always if i had a clock i would like it to go now 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 <laughs> that would be a very honest clock <laughs> that would be perfect <laughs> And what would you like to talk about, Susha? No, you answered it. It's in my head. The urgency. I just thought that it was my way to motivate me. But I guess it just takes me away. It's only now. Everything else is not real. It's so funny, you know, we're all in a time machine and the time machine moves forward now, 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 now. And every moment is different. Every moment is unique. No two moments are the same. Anything else, Susha? That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sush. Hello, Abaya. Uh, hello, Vishran. Hello, Abaya. <laughs> um. Anything else, uh, Baya? Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Baya. Hello, Amber. Hello. Hello. Um, my question is about um, seekers who turn their back on truth. Uh -huh. um, I've seen that happen so many times. People who were like, very devoted to you who would end up lying about what they found here. Um, uh -huh. I, I've seen it so often, I came to think it could happen to me or any of us. So why does it happen and how do I prevent it? Well, the ego has to protect itself. If it has the identity of being a seeker, and it leaves a living master, and there are no other living masters around, it can only really justify its leaving and survive as a seeker by somehow discrediting the master. And so all those who, who tell the truth are targets. Anyone who holds satsang is a target. Anything else, Amber? I love you very much. Thank you. Love you too, darling. Thank you. Addy, hello. Haven't seen you for a while, Addy. What are you up to? <laughs> hello, Vishant. Yeah, I haven't been on, in satsang for some time. Uh, and I actually want to ask you about it. You know, uh, do you know the reason why I haven't been attending? 
Oh, first of all, it's an hour out of your time when you could be playing football or having a drink with your friends. <laughs> Abaya, you haven't muted yourself. <laughs> like you have to sacrifice party time to come to that saying, uh, Addy. I, re I really don't think that's it, but okay. Okay, I'll give you another reason. You have got very close to me and you are tuning in a lot. And when you tune into a Buddha field, everything starts to come up that has not been dealt with and it's uncomfortable. And the best way to relieve that uh, discomfort because you're in a washing machine is to go away, is to leave. And so that's what you have probably done. Yeah, I, I, I thought so as well. I was wondering about two things that I think that's there is. Uh, so I do have a question. Um, when undoing beliefs, I find the belief of if that is so, if life is, uh, for example, unfair that uh, may make me helpless and hopeless in some situations. Yeah. So, But isn't, the, isn't that the truth, that life is unfair? The idea that yeah. life is fair is, a, is an illusion. The big animals eat the small animals, the old animals, and the, the sick animals. That's what happens. There's no such thing as fairness. That's, that's an idea, not a reality. But we tend to sell it to our children. So when they leave home, they can be victims of injustice and hurt themselves until they die. Everything is the way it's meant to be. There's no mistakes. So there is then a belief that there, there is no really, not really a safety net or any inbuilt safety in this whatever universe whatever that i got some sad sad news for you you're gonna die <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and everybody you know is going to die as well everybody this is a, there is no safety we're all terminal so how do i make that okay well don't make it okay and suffer <laughs> and the thing is we don't really know our use by date because we're not stamped yeah. You know, you can't find a stamp on you that says used by such and such a time. You just don't know. And so for me, I felt at the age of 19 or even younger that I was only going to live another year because I was such a wild thing. And so I squeezed the juice out of life to the max. I did everything because I thought I was only going to live for another year. And every year since 19 has been exactly like that. Adventure after adventure after adventure. Up to you. How do you live your life? Yeah. Not, not that exciting, definitely. Ah, you should try it, even just for a day. <laughs> I tried something yesterday, you know, so... <laughs> So, uh, never mind. <laughs> you try. <laughs> it must be pretty good if you won't talk about it. <laughs> I, I don't think this is the right time or place for it. Okay, I'm going to trust you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Abai. Hi, Vishra. Hello. Vishra, um, how to ensure that this love affair between master and disciple, you and me, never uh, fades or goes away? The only time that you can't perceive love is if you are closed or defended. Otherwise, the perception of love is always there because love is everywhere. Love is the fabric of this universe. 
The only reason people don't perceive it is because they're either closed or defended. Love is everywhere. Open, 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 and stay open. Remove all the obstacles in the way of openness. This is the way of the heart. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Isha. Nice to see you, Abay. Thank you, Isha. Thank you, darling. Rohan, hello. Hello, Vishmat. Happy to see you. I wanted to ask. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, um, in your experience, did you ever, were you ever afraid that you wouldn't like heavy metal music after enlightenment? I would have what? Were you ever afraid that you wouldn't enjoy heavy metal music after awakening? I've always loved heavy metal music. I'm an old rocker. Uh, I liked, when I was a teenager, I liked hotting up cars, listening to heavy metal, and dancing to heavy metal bands. Now I'm nearly 70 years old, and I like hotted up cars, and I like dancing to heavy metal music. And I go out with all these young people and dance on Saturday night. It's wonderful. Did you ever have somewhat of like a spiritual ego or you thinking that you had to look or behave in a certain way? Yeah, I wanted to grow dreadlocks because I was into reggae, man. <laughs> but my hair just wouldn't do it because mm -hmm. I was a businessman and my hair was short. <laughs> I'm teasing you. <laughs> But I did like reggae music. When I was a Sanyasin, uh, we used to go out on Sunday afternoons to a hotel that played nothing but reggae music, and we'd just dance for the whole session. I've got a, I've got a, 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 a dreads wig, wig that I could wear out, you know. I, I got one. And I can put it on, and maybe I could show you what I look can you like. Bring the <laughs> I'd like to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a Bob Marley outfit as well. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Bob Marley. What's a Bob Marley outfit look like? I have to put it on and show you, but once as soon as you see it, you'll say, Yeah, that's Bob Marley outfit. Yeah, with, that's with the box, with the wig. I'm gonna put the, the dreads on, you know. And... Okay. I like that. And, and and if I was really, really into reggae, I'd probably need to have a joint, but I don't smoke dope, so there's a bit of a bummer there, you know. <laughs> when did you stop smoking? Uh about twenty six, twenty seven years ago. Because I used to smoke, and um, it, I never gave it up. It gave me up. Mm. I, after after work, after I'd done a fair bit of work, uh, I'd have a, a joint, just just one, and it would mellow me out. And um, that's all. But I haven't had a smoke now for 27 years. I'm already mellowed out. Is that the same thing with psychedelics around the same time, 27 years? About the same time, yeah, about the same time. About that long ago, I tried the psychedelics to see what they would do. They were interesting. But really, I didn't see anything that I hadn't already found in meditation. Oh. Did you take any after Satori's? No. This was before having any Satori's. Um. I didn't do any form of drug before I had Satori's. I had Satori's when I was 33 years old. That was my first lot of Satori's. And I hadn't touched drugs. I was an mm -hmm. anti-drug anti campaigner. I wow. put out a call monthly uh, that was against drugs, that was actually mm -hmm. distributed to all doctor surgeries and all rehabilitation centres in West Australia because I was so against drugs 
Yet I was a drinker. I liked to drink, you know, the scotch and coke. Scotch, so it would get me a little bit high, and coke, so I could enjoy it longer because of the caffeine. So what changed? Mm -hmm. Oh well, what changed was uh, I had some satori's, and I realised, wow, because I got very honest with myself after the satori's. I'm telling people all about these drugs. Like I used to go on television talking about different drugs because I was apparently the local expert. Yet I hadn't even tried them. I felt so fraudulent. So I went out and I tried every drug known to man. You know you did. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your most, your least um, favorite drug that you've experienced? Uh, San, San Pedro Cactus. Mes I think it's masculine or, yeah, yeah, because it made me feel very sick before the high came on. Mm -hmm. uh, but once the, once the high came on, it was very interesting because I was seeing a lot of stuff. But once again, I'd seen it all in meditation because I mm -hmm. was an meditator. Mm -hmm. So that probably didn't last too long, right? You're psychedelic. I only tried, only tried that once, actually. I only tried it once. Um, I tried everything once. Some things I tried a little bit more, but I was never really addicted to anything except probably alcohol, which gave me up. Um, I used to like red wine as well, you know, like uh, with with dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I was brought up in a family uh, that used to drink, and so I had the habits. Mm-hmm. So no more drink to uh, present day. You want to take no. a, a drink? Yeah, I drink. I've got a I've got a ginger beer, and nice. it's really potent, man. It's like whoa, but it's got no alcohol in it. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. It's always I have to get to my um, my dreadlock wig out and we we'll get down to a bit of Bob Marley. <laughs> That's great, Bishmar. I'd love to do that. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to see, see you too. Thank you, Rowan. Thank you. Judith Davis. That's like Judy Davis. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Am I loud enough? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to go down your memory lane as well because when i was reading some of your stuff online and i've only just discovered you can you believe this um that you said you went used to go to zorba the buddha yeah the restaurant in Fremantle. yes i used to work there did you because i was the md there and well, one I... night three or four young Turks came in. I, I, I'm asking. It's one of them, you, who came in, and they were they were celebrating that they just made a closed a deal on some quite a hefty amount, and so they were drinking all the best wine in the in the in the restaurant. And I had to make a decision afterwards whether or not to take your credit card for for this amount. So I made an executive decision and go, it wasn't you. Could it have been you? Yes, it could have been me. That was the sort of thing I did. <laughs> it was a fun, it was the most fun night. But I got, I, I eventually took Sanyas in 83 and I worked at Zorb the Buddhas in Fremantle as a cocktail waiter. And when? Addition, what year? Uh, it would have been 83, 84. Because I I came back from uh, Puna in about eighty one when they decamped to o Oregon, ah, and, and that's when we were there. That no, I took it in seventy six. Yeah, no, that was way before me. I I in in seventy six, so I hadn't heard of Osho. I no, I, you, I don't know who you were. Just an ordinary guy when I saw you, and it would have been about eighty. 1980. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, is... I'm just, uh, I thought, 
God, I bet that's the guy that that I made this executive <laughs> this season. I had to answer for it next day, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, well I used to I used to pay for it with credit cards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably was. Anyway, yeah. so <laughs> that's me. Um What's your saying yes in name, Judith? Vimala. Anand Vimala. Oh, I've got, I remember you. <laughs> I do remember you? The, yes, I do. Yes, Vimala. Well, anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's me. So, you would have been a member of the commune. Yeah. Would, I yeah, never. Uh, Collie Street. Yeah. I never joined the commune in Collie Street because I applied to join, and Sheila Silverman wanted to take over my company and put mm -hmm. Sanyasins in it. And at mm. the time, I had a publishing company, and it was quite big, and mm. I knew that she'd send it broke. Mm, so yeah. I said, no. I mm. said, no, nah, I'm not joining. But what I did have, which was probably similar to you, is I had absolute devotion to Osho. Mm. Well, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. Bhagwan Bhag World, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Yes, so, Bhagwan, so, yes. So if I come down there, can, can I, you know, get some of this reflected energy that you've if I come down to Fremantle, are you in Fremantle? I, I operate in um, uh, Bedford Dale. I have a centre there uh, uh, and uh, I do public satsangs there on a Friday night where people can come. I was operating in Fremantle at the meeting place, but we've had a lot of problems with the management there. Um, so we've just recently changed that situation where I'm currently holding satsang from a house that I have in, in Spearwood. But it's not open to the public. It's just, it's, it's open to everybody online, um, but it's not open to the public as in people sitting with me. I've got, uh, at the moment, I've got four people in front of me. So, so what, um, how does one take sannyas with you then? Ah, well, you would have witnessed, uh, Arnav, Arnav just takes yeah. sanyas? Yeah, I've, I've seen people doing it. Is that the only way it happens? Yes. Well, the way we ha way it happened when I took sanyas was you rode away to um, the ranch and, uh, and applied for sanyas and they would send back a name to the centre and then Indivar would give you sanyas, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We took it. I took it from Bangor. I'm sure you did. In '76, you would have been able to be in contact with him physically yeah. and personally. Right. <laughs> Lucky you! By the time I got to him, uh, you couldn't speak to him because you couldn't get within 50 meters of him. He had too many thousands of followers around him yeah. at the ranch. So I went to the ranch and lived there in '84 and '85. And then I went to Pune yeah. in, in 89 and lived there in 89. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do I, what do I do? Um, I, I, I'm going to take sanyas if you don't, if you're, do you take ex -Raji, Rajanishis? <laughs> I have a lot of Rajanishis already. <laughs> See, what, what Osho said, to, what I heard him say anyway, was if, if he passed, go find someone who's awake. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Because... Because dead gurus don't kick butt. So you're gonna you're gonna sort of sort of by osmosis sort of come to us. No, 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 no. I'll have a cup of tea with you because you're you're actually an old acquaintance. I think we probably look a bit different than where we met because it's been forty years. I know you had a heck, heck of a lot of hair. You look more like you look more like the. The fellow in the interview with Osho. Oh, yeah. Bagwan, was it? yeah, that was an amazing that 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 interview that I did with Osho. The forty eight minutes I spent in front of him blew me apart, and it changed yeah. my life immeasurably. I went from being a businessman to a bum inside a year and a half. I gave my companies to my staff. I walked out and walked around Australia barefoot for four years as an absolute bum, looking for my heart because I was out of touch with it. He changed my whole direction of life to such a, a, a large extent. 
Well, okay, the ball's in my court, is it? Well, no, it's uh, if you contact Tosh, oh, okay. who's to the society, um, he'll give you my phone number, and you can ring me and or text me, and we'll get together for a coffee somewhere mm -hmm. down in Fremantle. Okay, you're... that sounds good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what I wanted to do when I was a sannyasin is I wanted to be with my teacher. I wanted to be able to chat with him. I wanted to be able to walk yeah. with him. And mm -hmm. that was something I couldn't do. So I try to make myself as available as possible to everybody that's with me. Okay. You know? And Tosh, I can get on online his details, can I? Tosh, I don't want yeah. to take the time off from everybody else there. We better. Oh, you're okay, darling. The Buddhist Society, the, the website and the Facebook page, yeah. they all have details on how you can contact Tosh because okay. he's the of the society. Mm -hmm. I I actually, um, I don't do much. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, you need, you need time, don't you? <laughs> uh, Judy, it's been lovely seeing you. Yeah, you yeah, too. Seeing you. Contact Tosh and we'll get yeah. together and yeah. we might have a meal or we might just have a cup of tea, but we yeah. will get together. Okay, thank you. Okay, darling. Nice speaking to you. Nice speaking to you too, darling. Hyena, is it Hyena? Is that how you say your name, Hyena? Yes, Namaste Bhagwan. Namaste. That's an unusual name, uh, Hyena. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like it. I, 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 thank you. Thank you. Mm, yeah. I want to express my gratitude for being here. Yeah, where are you? Yeah. You're situated. I, I'm in New York, United States. I've, I've spent a bit of time in New York. It's a pretty fast-moving place. Oh, yeah. It's a trash can, isn't it? Ah, well, I left New York after hanging out in New York and came back to Australia, and it was like coming back to the retarded. The New York people, they just go, 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 let's do it now, let's do it now, let's do it now. Whereas you come back to Australia and everyone wants to have a meeting and think about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Rishan, for all your work, what you're doing, because... I want to say some quick story how I met how I met OSHA. I, I was born in Belarus. It's a center of Europe. It's nearby Russia and Ukraine. It's a small country, and I was raised as an, uh, like uh, Orthodox in Orthodox Church, you know, and um, I was very dedicated for it. And I was wasn't was to be wants to be a monk. And I asked my parents to go to a monastery or so. And they say, no, we don't want that. We want you to be married. We want you to be a priest and have children and stuff. So I surrender for it. I get married. I get three kids. And it was like quite hard story. But back to Belarus, I was riding in trolley, you know, the like electric bus. Yeah. And uh, I saw uh, a post, like a poster of OSHA. And uh, I, I took a marker and I wrote on it, this is a cult, <laughs> I have to escape myself when I was in cult already, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, long story short, I end up here. I'm, I'm here in New York for five years already. And uh, here I went through this experience. I run out, out of ideas, which I pick up from the Bible or from master jesus and i end up seeking for someone who's awake because it didn't give me much anymore neither prayer neither i was using mala for praying you know going into isihazm and on, on orthodox stuff and it gave me uh my heart i want to say but my body is so uh, traumatized during my childhood so for me it's very hard to manage my anger sometimes and my emotions. And I found so much peace when I saw uh, Osho's interview, the short interview, what his teaching is. 
and he said, my teaching is very simple and like to, just to be present to what is real. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I started listening a bit. And after that, I found your interview with him. And I said, oh, this dude is alive. I'm going to go for it, you know? <laughs> and there you go. Here I am. So it's very nice to be here in your presence. I want to say that it's my third uh, Zoom meeting, which I'm attending, but it's, I'm releasing every time a lot of negative energy just leave me out. And I feel so much free and I feel so much back in touch with my heart because i do remember myself as a very very young age like two or maybe even younger when i was laying down against the wall just on the bed when i just wake up and i remember this feelings of uh, nothingness like absolutely nothing i see the wall i see my own body i see my tooth flowing i see like a fly so i'm just witnessing and awareness became aware of itself and my recent experience I was used to go here. I live in nearby Brighton Beach, New York. So, uh, and there I go once in the morning because there's no one in there and there was only one dude fishing. So I did breathing exercise to release DMT and I pass out on the stones, like completely pass out. And I remember me pissing out like all the shrink into nothing. And I remember this moment when I was into the the state where there's no thing that I was aware of everything, but nothing was going on. No toots, no seeing anything. I know my eyes closed. It was very short. And after that, I wake up. And since then, my life is not the same. And uh, I stopped wearing shoes. I stopped wearing um, like normal clothes. I rub my shin in sheets and wore bare feet outside. And it's helped me a lot because people was picking up on me all the time and they still do. And, but I don't feel anything anymore. I it's not touching me. And I found that the way which you teaching the way of complete surrender, the way, the way of complete openness, it's only one, only one way. If I really want to be me, because I tried to know the way I was a singer, uh, in like in opera world and stuff. And, you know, it's not satisfying. Me. It's not giving me anything, but just be and uh, be unapologetically, absolutely me as much as I could and open with, with that. That's giving me life back. And I'm very happy to be here in this moment. And I'm very happy to be under your feet. Thank you so much. It is lovely to meet you. I hope I get to see Thanks. you some. Yeah. yeah, I would like to see in person since uh, be before you passed, <laughs> honestly, because life is short. Yeah, that's not a plan. <laughs> it is not. It is not. Thank you, Richard. Thank People you. appreciate you. Thank you. Go, Johnny. Hello. Go, Johnny. Hello. Hey. Uh, oh, sorry. Hello. Dear Fisher, I had to unmute myself. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, there's been so much said involving uh, um, the question that arose. I don't know <laughs> so good to formulate the question, um, but let's say I, I, I just take what you said. I, uh, you, sque you squeezed everything out of life. Uh, that you went traveling and you, you drove the motor, right? And that's pretty much what... What I did also, I drove the motorbike, uh, I, I, I traveled a lot and, and done all these things, but um, I didn't give it up. It gave me up. There's literally no pool anymore to those, to those things. And I just, my life changed. I, I live in Portugal and it's really secluded. Um, and that's great because I the, 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 the meditation brings so much. But then I heard you say, yeah, but but... But if you don't uh, interact with people, you don't have mirror, mirrors and you don't grow. And actually, I don't. I, I, I don't say I don't grow, but I don't interact so much with 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 people because there's nothing pulling me in there. So I just wanted to have your opinion on that. Um, in January, I go back. I'm originally from the Netherlands and all my friends say, yeah, let's come and let's do this. But there's nothing pulling me. And it's like, OK, I can come. But, you know, so I don't I don't I, I don't know if I'm. Not okay, accepting as it is. 
I've got something for you. Look, all human beings who are ego-based suffer fear because it's part of the primal programming. Instead of playing life safely, start playing dangerously. Start stepping towards fear instead of away from it and watch how it changes your life. Say hello to the stranger who looks dangerous. Say hello to the girl that looks beautiful. Start going where you're frightened to go and your whole life will change. Mm. Up to you. <laughs> adventure, to you. adventure time, my friend. Adventure time. Okay, good Johnny. It is time. Thank you for Satsang. Good to see you, Bravehearts, here tonight.